Hi, this is Morris Jetty from SCEDMD with another SLURM tutorial. This one's going to cover SLURM's database. Uh, the outline is we're going to go over the, uh, the architecture of, of SLURM with respect to its database use, the commands available for accounting, uh, resource limits, fair share scheduling, and then go over configuration for your accounting. In terms of the architecture, uh, we advise that you maintain a single database for information about all your computers at, at a site. You could potentially maintain a separate database for each cluster if you want, but that's definitely going to increase your uh, uh, overhead and it's going to make it more difficult to use potentially, at least if users are, are running jobs on multiple machines. We recommend using the MySQL database. That's the most thoroughly tested, and that's what we use ourselves. Uh, PostgreSQL is another option. Uh, it's not as, as tested, and it doesn't support all the features. But if you really want to, that's a possibility. Uh, the data is maintained in the database by username. So uh, we recommend having uniform mapping of username and user ID across all of your computers at your center. This gives you a picture of what your architecture looks like with a single database, a single uh, SLURM database daemon, and um, the various commands and, and daemons that communicate with the SLURM DVD. Uh, DBD stands for database daemon. It's an intermediary between the user and the database. Uh, it avoids giving users direct access to the database. Everything goes through the DBD and uh, all communications between the user commands and the DBD are authenticated. Uh, we advise using Munge for that. And only the uh, some DBD needs permission to read and write the database. There's no need for the users to have direct access to that. Uh, when there are updates to the database, say a user uh, issues a command to change some limit, uh, that information is pushed out directly to the SLURM control demons on the affected clusters. And for accounting information uh, collected by the SLURM control demon, if the SLURM DBD isn't responding or the database is down, the SLURM control demon will cache the data and push it out to the DVD as soon as it does start to respond. SLURM uses a concept of association to manage its data. It's a uh, four-tuple of your computer cluster name, your account, uh, username, and an optional partition name. Each association can have different limits associated with it uh, and different uh, shares of the resources. Each account name must be unique so if you uh, uh, have a, a hierarchical tree of the accounts, um, you can't repeat a name in different places in that hierarchy. It just makes for management uh, uh, problems. At the bottom, it shows you a, uh, an example of the type of information that might be associated with it with an us. At the bottom, there's a, an example of uh, the contents of an association where you've got a user, an account name, uh, a fair share of, of the resources on the machine, time limit, maximum number of jobs, etc. Each account can have a coordinator. That's a user that's given special permission to add users, delete users from uh, add sub-accounts, modify the limits and, and shares, uh, and, and a coordinator at a given level in the hierarchy has control over all of the accounts from that point uh, down. And he can lower limits, but he can't increase them beyond what the limit is at, at his uh, point in the uh, hierarchy. So here, here's an example of uh, what is in the database with respect to accounts. Uh, this just shows limits where you've got a, uh, a root account with no limit on the maximum number of jobs and then we define uh, different 
limits at different uh, uh, points in the hierarchy. Each, each one of those uh, uh, divisions and groups represents a different account and different users. So, for example, um, if you have an account coordinator uh, at Division B, he could increase the maximum number of jobs for any one of those groups up to 25 or decrease it as, as desired and could also directly uh, modify the uh, limits on the individual users. The commands that you use for, uh, for managing this is, as account manager. Uh, it's available to privileged users to view and modify the database. You can uh, uh, add clusters, uh, add accounts, add users to accounts, delete accounts, change limits, etc. Here are some examples of its use. Uh, in the first one, we add a new cluster. Uh, in the second line, we're adding an account called Science and uh, in the third uh, line, we're adding a couple of sub-accounts of science, one named chemistry and one named physics. Uh, adding a user to uh, an account, showing the contents of the account limits associated with it and so forth. And uh, the final example is an example of modifying a, uh, an association, in this case the association is for user Adam and, and account chemistry where you're setting the maximum number of jobs equal to two. And this would apply to all clusters unless you specify uh, you know, specific cluster or specific partition where you want that limit to apply. The accounting commands include S account, which provides a detailed account of individual jobs and steps. And you can filter it by user or cluster or partition name. But uh, the key thing to remember is it's, it's generating a report, uh, reporting uh, usage of individual jobs and steps. S-Report aggregates that information. So you can get uh, information about how much uh, time is used by an individual user or on an individual partition or some combination of that and you can specify start and stop times for both of these. Uh, anyway, S-Report isn't going to report information about the individual jobs, it's only aggregated. S-Stat generates a more detailed uh, accounting report about individual jobs which are currently running. So it has access to information about uh, the individual tasks of a job step, for example, and that level of detail is aggregated after the job step ends, so you're not going to have as much detail in the uh, accounting records that are available to S account. The resource limits are available on a per job or per association level. Uh, the association level limits apply to an association, all of its, its children as in all of its users. So, for example, uh, picking group submit job, it means that for that account, all of its sub-accounts and all of its users, they can't have more than that number of jobs submitted at any given time. There are also a variety of per job limits. Uh, time limits and, and, and size limits, and these are uh, available on a per association level. So you can have different uh, time limits on a per job basis for uh, different users and different partitions, as well as the limits you define in SLURM for the partition as a whole. SLURM has the concept of fair share scheduling where you're uh, able to define how you want the resources shared amongst uh, all the jobs. It's not a, a hard limit. It's not a matter of saying uh, an individual user can't consume more than, than 500 CPU hours, although that option is available too. But this is uh, a way to divide up the resources where you can say I want 
this account to have 10% of the resources and this user to have 5% uh, of his account's resources. It's done on a hierarchical basis and there are other uh, uh, options available in the multi-factor uh, plug-in to control job priority so you can uh, increase the priority of jobs which have waited a long time, jobs which are large, et cetera.